девушки бою, не ложись на краю, придет серенький волчок и ухватит. The Wolves at the Cradle Every cry of a newborn child reaches their ears. They imprint each sound so that they can recognize their voice from millions. And when the child calls them, they set off, no matter how long the journey. The wolves follow the tracks. They pick up the trail over mountains, through gorges of steel and concrete, and across the seas. Tirelessly, the wolves follow the call of the child. They can easily distinguish the truthfulness of the voice, whether the heart is indeed speaking from within. After all, they have listened at the cradle, huddled by the cot night after night, sheltering those who cried for their protection. The wolves know their children well. When the elderly sing about the wolves, tell stories to the children, they have often long lost faith in their protection. They no longer believe in their strength, their selfless courage, their loyalty. They only see the teeth, only hear the hoarse growls. The fear that the old sow in the children make them stronger, more important than they themselves would ever be. The fear of the children make the elderly the owners of their courage and truth. Those songs and fairy tales were lies. Because the wolves can eat the fear and protect the truth, restoring the courage. And someday, in many lives, this day will never come. The wolves will have gained trust in the person who once laid in their cradle as a child, asking for their help. The wolves start trusting the people solely by observing their actions. This time they don't rely on their ears. Instead, they only hear the intentions of the people's actions. They rely only on their eyes. When they see what the person actually does, if he can withstand the forces of shadow and light, solely the wolves decide when to take the last step. When the moment has come for them to surrender, they lie down at the children's feet from back then and will follow them from then on, through every day through every night. Sag mir, hörst du dieses Lied? Die Straße, die spielt Von Moskau nach Berlin Pfeifen alle kaum an dieser Welt Von ihren Dächern diese eine Melodie Deine Melodie Mein Sohn, bitte glaub ihm kein einziges Wort 
Wenn er dir sagt, dein Papa sei ein Krimineller Denn er ist nur ein Lügner und ein Dieb Er klaut es von den Schwachen, doch ich teile auch die Reste auf meinem Teller Also halte noch ein bisschen durch Glaub mir, es wird wieder besser Denn wir halten wirklich alles in den eigenen Händen Außer Gott und das Wetter Und anstatt darauf zu warten, dass der Sturm an mir vorbeizieht Lauf ich lieber stur durch den Regen Weil wenn alles groß quatscht, man, dann sag ich lieber nicht zu Twitter Lass eine Spur von meinem Leben Sag mir, hörst du dieses Lied? Die Straße, die ich spiel Von Moskau nach Berlin Pfeifen alle Gauner dieser Welt von ihren Dächern diese eine Melodie Diese eine Melodie Vom trockenen Ufer ist es leicht für sie zu lachen Denn sie schwimmen nicht mit mir an diesem heißkalten Wasser Und den Wert eines Menschen misst man nicht an seinen Worten Sondern nur an dem, was er bisher geschafft hat Ich halte nur so lange schon durch, weil ich weiß, es wird wieder besser Denn es liegt wirklich alles in meinen eigenen Händen Außer Gott und das Wetter Und von allem, was ich nehme, gebe ich mehr als das Doppelte zurück Nur ein Schwächling hast den Starken, der dem Schwachen etwas gibt Und wenn Neid oder Geld dich zu dem machen, was du bist Dann gibt im Spiegel nicht die Schuld, wer den Hass in deinem Gesicht Hab keine Angst, mein Freund, sie können dir nichts tun Denn auch ein trauriges Kapitel schreibt das Ende nicht vom Buch Statt leben wie auf Knien, steh ich ein für meine Werte Oder sterbe lieber nur bei dem Versuch Sag mir, hast du dieses Lied? Die Straße, die ich spiel Von Moskau nach Berlin Pfeifen alle Gauner dieser Welt von ihren Dächern Diese eine Melodie Diese eine Melodie Out of the burning city. Flames drifting black smoke into the sky above the city. The fire roared like an insatiable animal and crackled. The silhouette of the city had become jagged. Destroyed houses, collapsed roofs, perforated glass towers. The asphalt had been warming up, already melted in places in which for weeks the unleashed forces had been raging. New fires igniting all the time. There was nothing left to destroy, only to burn. The faceless rampaged tirelessly through the streets. The guardians had already retreated days ago, either out of fear for their own lives, or because they had given up and torn their uniforms off their bodies, throwing them into the fire. The faceless include everybody. Those who are willing to exterminate the past, those who are working hard and quietly. No screams, no cheers, no songs. The faceless were left speechless. Not greeting each other, not saying goodbye. Those who were allowed to follow them gave a silent consent. Uniting them was the rage that turned glass into shards, monuments into stones, money into metal. But there was one thing they couldn't do. Creating new hope from fear. A future out of hopelessness. Apparently they had wanted nothing more. That's what it sounded like when they still had words left. Since last night, all of this was irrelevant for her. What was wanted by whom and why? Who was dreaming about what? She only knew one thing. This isn't the world that will embrace my child. The newborn, which she had hidden under her red coat, was in her perception almost surprisingly born. Presuming that the decision whether her life was going to follow this path could have been made in the last moment. The path of a mother. The rough fabric of the coat rubbed against the delicate skin of the little child's arms, but the baby didn't cry out, as if it knew that any sound would attract danger. The faceless heard everything, and what they disliked had to burn. The mother hurried from house corner to house corner, in quick short steps, she crossed over the street, constantly looking around. 
shards crunching under the thin soles of her shoes, and every now and then she felt a sharp stone, a screw, or something else that the Inferno had left behind. This isn't a world for him, she thought repeatedly, as she pressed the delicate, fragile body against herself to feel that she hadn't lost him. The black smoke had stung her face and pressed tears from the corners of her eyes, which thankfully made their way out. Later on, she pushed herself. Since she was a young girl, she had heard about the gate. It was told that it was too challenging to open it alone and strong enough to resist all storms. Even the faceless would not be able to open it. Their fires would be ineffective. The mother hadn't thought long about what she had just done. Would she be able to do it? Perhaps. She knew deep down that her child, once the gate closed behind him, would never completely return to her. Part of his heart would remain behind the gate and pay the forces that had taken him on. Before this unpredictable world with its black smoke, its flames and its shards would devour her son, she would take the last necessary step. After a few more street corners and niches, along the walls against which the mother had pressed herself in order to never step out of the darkness, she distanced herself from the wide lane which had caused the chaos. In this part of the city, the flames had left a soot-covered black and dead landscape. The ash ruins of the houses in which the life of this city had once flourished seemed to watch her reproachfully and full of sadness. Somewhere here, it has to be. The gate, she thought feverishly. The ash-gray skin that had settled everywhere on the surroundings hardly left any orientation. Following her instinct, she turned left into a narrow alleyway. Perhaps the gate was at the end of the alleyway. She was on the right path. Her arms, meanwhile, seemed to have stiffened around the child. So tightly had she pressed him against her. But she had to let go soon, very soon. Where once there had been a small space, large heavy blocks of stone had fallen onto the asphalt. She climbed over them, reaching the steps that led to the gate. With great effort, the mother removed her red coat, painfully placed one knee on the first step, and spread out the fabric on the ground. Until that moment, her child had not made a sound, had not shed a tear, but now, lowering him from her arms, the child raised its voice. Not to cry out, it was rather a long, relieved sigh, loud and audible. As if her body would no longer obey the commands of her soul, tears again made their way down her cheeks, in it the fire being reflected. Gently the mother laid the child's body on her coat, which she had spread out on the lower steps like a sea of red fabric. The eyes of the mother and the child met silently. In the distance, the fire cracked its whip of destruction. The glow of the fires in the distance lit up the edge of the sky. One last time she caressed her child over its head. They would see each other again, someday, when the fires extinguished. I can't protect you, do you hear me? She said softly, rising slowly as if the strength was fully leaving her body. Once more, tears trickled down her cheek. Then she heard a crash, a thunder, footsteps on the asphalt. One last look. Then she mustered all her strength, turned on the step facing the enormous gate and ran stumbling back across the square. She climbed over the rubble and for a brief moment she thought she heard a hoarse growl. But she didn't look back. When she heard the gate slam into the lock, she looked over her shoulder one last time. Her child and her coat had disappeared. The guardians of the dungeon had taken in their student. Deine Träume schließ sie weg, aber vergiss sie nie Denn wenn sie sie nicht haben können, kommen sie und vergiften sie Der Weg ist dunkel und mein Schatten, er beschützt mich Jedoch kennen sie die Achillesferse, wissen sie, ein Schnitt genügt Dieses Leben ist ein Märchen wie Opasche Wie eine Fluchtfahrt bei Stau und roten Ampeln 
wie Alkoholiker am Boden einer Flasche Für den größten Verrat, mein Freund reichte schon ein Apfel Du denkst, du kennst mich, ich wünsch dich mich auch Such den Ausweg aus der Nacht, doch halt die Lichter nicht mehr aus Als wär der Wahnsinn hier auf Fest, wo alle schlichten mit der Faust Doch jede Narbe, die wir tragen, sind Geschichten auf der Haut Ich schreib lieber an Metaphern als kalte Realität Weil die meisten wollen in Wirklichkeit die Wahrheit gar nicht sehen Kein Problem, denn jeder ist sich selbst am nächsten Bis der große böse Wolf kommt und raubt dir deine Schäfchen Keine Liebe, doch es lieben sie die Ratten Je heller jedes Licht, umso länger auch sein Schatten Und leider haben die seiner keine stichfesten Jacken Gesetz der Diebe, deine Schwäche zeigt sie nie Und Respekt gibt nur dem, der deinen Respekt auch verdient Aber manchmal sinkt sogar das Elend viel zu tief Als ob dein allerschlimmster Tag an einer Crackpfeife zieht Ich trag ein Ozean an Worten in meinem Kopf rum Schwimme durch ein Meer aus Benzin und such den letzten Funken Hoffnung Hass ist ein härtester Gegner im Topf rum Gutes geht den Bach runter, doch Schlechtes geht den Block rum Denn alle wollen Cash, aber niemand macht was möglich Jeder will Fleisch, aber keiner etwas töten alle wollen die Wahrheit, doch die Lüge klingt am schönsten Wenn der große böse Wolf kommt und raubt mir deine Schicht Wir warten alle auf den Tag Guardians of the Dungeon The echo was reflected several times by the stone walls of the dungeon as the gate crashed into the frame. The high-rising walls seemed lost before the ceiling became visible. The eyes first had to adjust to the light. For anyone being used to seeing the sky and for anyone being able to decide what was light and what was dark, here in the dungeon the laws of day and night were suspended. Whoever came here was sent. They never came voluntarily, submitted, locked away, abandoned. Behind the countless bars that separated the small chambers from the hall, the guardians of the dungeon moved forward to welcome the soon-to-be-named little newcomer, as if they were on silent command. The atmosphere, the air, everything here seemed to be tougher and colder than the world outside. The child felt the hard, bony hands on the back of his neck, which had picked him up outside. They were no longer the soft, gentle hands of the mother. These bones seemed harder, the skin thinner, the strength of the fingers almost mechanical. Boy, come. You're even safer here than outside. Even if it doesn't seem like it, you have been entrusted to us. A deep, rough voice blared out. The king of the dungeon carried the newcomer through the corridor, which was lined with the tightly locked dwellings of the guardians. They peered attentively through their bars, cautiously slipping their hands and arms through, letting the images dance on their skin, as if they wanted to give the human child a special treat. Some of them had been there for a lifetime, others even several. Their faces were mild, but the pains of the past had immortalized themselves in deep lifelines on their skin. No one had chosen this fate for themselves. Everyone had to accept it. Whoever had the strength could become a guardian, often even without being aware of this task. You see, my boy, not long on this earth and you're already learning your first lesson here. You can still choose a side. They're only thin bars, but they can torment you. Every step you take and every decision you make brings you closer to these bars, or further away. 
The king of the dungeon carried the entrusted one in his arms so that he could look over his shoulder. With his other hand, the king carried the red coat in which the mother had discarded her child. You won't be needing this anymore, he murmured, and flung the garment towards the cells. A lightning-fast hand shot out, grabbed the fabric, and disappeared back inside the dwelling. Don't worry. You will just look after it, cherish it, and take care of it. You will get your mother's warm coat back when you've learned what coldness is. Awkwardly, the rough hand, as if cut from stone, stroked the child's head. The guardians of the dungeon murmured a barely audible, Welcome. None of them would ever harm the child. The wolves would kill them on the spot. The guardians knew they had to fight their own battle in the game of shadow and light. Perhaps they had lost it and regretted it. But that was why their gift was so important. Each had the gift for him that only they themselves could give. One's own tale. The child listened to all the stories told by the guardians of the dungeon. The drawings on their arms became his picture books. Each of their stories ended the same way, always with the same sentence. You alone will make the decision between shadow and light about your life. You will come to the bridge. The bridge connects the dark and its enemy the light. When you stand on it, you will have to stand firm. Only a clear decision will guide your life. He who wavers falls between light and shadow into the depths. Only when the entrusted one had seen all the skin pictures, heard all the tales and walked in the dungeon through all the levels and through all the chambers, did they let him go. The guardians had done what they could do. They would release the one entrusted to them back into the world. The entrusted one squeezed the hand of the king of the dungeon. He felt that it had become softer. Or had his own become harder? The coldness of the dungeon had left its marks on his body. The entrusted one received the red coat in which his mother had wrapped him. The sea of red fabric seemed to have become smaller. Without looking back, he went into the world outside. The heavy gate fell shut behind him. But what was the world like outside? It had become even more dangerous. The fire city had long since cooled. But from the ashes of the rubble, a jungle had grown over the years. The spiteful threats lay dormant among the trees, in the pits and caves. The jungle had a destiny in store for anyone who entered it. Ich forme mein Schicksal und die Welt um mich herum mit beiden Händen Merkt ihr was in Flammen stand, kann ich ein zweites Mal verbrennen Und selbst wenn jeder Schmerz geht vorbei, Mann Und dann mache ich mich selbst wieder zur besten Version, die ich sein kann Denn je weniger sie an sich selbst glauben, glaube mir Desto mehr müssen sie an den Können zweifeln Und auch wenn ihr Gegenwind brennt in den Augen Weil man rennt um sich die Steine auf dem Weg Nicht von alleine beiseite, also jeden Tag wieder hinfallen und aufstehen So lange mit dem Kopf durch Durch die Wände, bis die Pläne endlich aufgehen Dann wieder hinfallen und aufstehen Und dann immer wieder, immer wieder, wieder aufstehen Selbst wenn das Schicksal mich trifft Mit seinem härtesten Schlag Besiegt es mich nie wieder, nie wieder Heißt nicht mal an meinem schlechtesten Tag Selbst wenn das Schicksal mich trifft Mit seinem härtesten Schlag Besiegt es mich nie wieder, nie wieder Heißt nicht mal an meinem schlechtesten Tag Selbst am Boden sieht man immer noch den Himmel Nur die in deinem Kopf ist die wichtigste Stimme Sie hilft dir gegen dich und alle Zweifel zu gewinnen Und wirklich jeder der noch schreit, dass du nicht kannst Wird dann verschwinden in der Stille Es ist alles Energie, mein Freund Gib so viel du nimmst, wir atmen ein, atmen aus Und überleben aus Instinkt wie gemacht dafür Auch wenn nicht jeder Kampf gelingt Kämpft man so lange nochmal, bis dann das Endergebnis stimmt Den Erfolg teilen wir mit Liebe Nur den Schmerz bis dahin teilen wir niemals Genau das steigert die Leistung wieder Egal wie tief das Leben schneidet Die Erkenntnisse, die schneiden tiefer Denn Wunden bluten und verheilen Selbst wenn das Schicksal mich trifft Mit seinem härtesten Schlag Besiegt es mich nie wieder Nie wieder heißt nicht mal an meinem schlechtesten Tag Selbst wenn das Schicksal mich trifft 
Schritt Mit seinem härtesten Schlag Besiegt es mich nie wieder und nie wieder Heißt nicht mal an meinem schlechtesten Tag Glaub mir nicht, schlägt härter zu als das Leben Sogar aus dem Dreck wachsen Pflanzen dem Himmel noch entgegen Und die einzig wahre Regel für Erfolg liegt bei dir selbst Man muss nur einmal öfter aufstehen als man fällt Denn kann ich nicht, kenn ich nicht Und will ich nicht, glaub ich nicht Denn wir selbst sind oft der beste Beweis, der uns fehlt Wie verdammt weit wir bereit sein können zu gehen yeah. Selbst wenn das Schicksal mich trifft Mit seinem härtesten Schlag Besiegt es mich nie wieder und nie wieder Heißt nicht mal an meinem schlechtesten Tag Selbst wenn das Schicksal mich trifft Mit seinem härtesten Schlag Besiegt es mich nie wieder und nie wieder Heißt nicht mal an meinem schlechtesten Tag The bridge between shadow and light. Days passed, weeks, months, years. The boy wandered through the jungle and he kept learning. He practiced taming the wildest tigers so that they would carry him a part of the way. He built himself a palace out of wood and leaves and soon he even stopped sleeping in caves at night because every creature that caught sight of him in the moonlight knew that he had earned his place in the undergrowth of the jungle. Without knowing where to go, without any orientation, he had nevertheless taken exactly the path that was intended for him. And so he finally came to the bridge that the guardians of the dungeon had already told him about in each of their stories. The bridge looked old and fragile. After all, every person had come here at least once in their lifetime and had placed their feet on the cracked stones. Without hesitation, the boy put one foot on it, briefly paused, and then took the first step. Cautiously but determinedly, the boy went forward. The distant end of the bridge on the other side disappeared into the dark nothingness. He went further until he reached the exact middle. Below him, a bottomless abyss. A mist that twisted and turned around itself incessantly, as if it could hardly wait for the next misstep of a person, only to swallow him soundlessly. The air was cold, as cold as the air in the dungeon had once been. The boy quickly felt the similarity. His body tensed itself, as if preparing to put on armor. The jungle, the rides on the tigers, the work at the palace, they had made him strong. But had life also made him wise? He took a deep breath, on one side the darkness. The side that he had come from had changed itself. It seemed to glow. The brightness was so strong that he could hardly see inside. Then he sensed that he was not alone. Figures were approaching from each side, just two silhouettes at a time, which were filled in with all the people the boy had ever met and all the words he had ever heard. From the bright side, all the hopes and dreams were united inside the figure. The feelings, the courage, the love. From the dark side, the figure was filled with the disappointments, the anger and the lies of those who had repeatedly tried to take advantage of him for their causes. The two bodies of light and shadow moved towards the center of the bridge, stretching out their arms towards the boy. Slowly he opened his arms until he could grasp the light and the darkness with each hand Immediately, he felt the power emanating from both. Like the middle link of a chain, he withstood them both. No force could pull him to its side. Three days and three nights have passed in which the voices, feelings and promises of the two beings did their utmost to win him over to one side. But he held on tightly to their hands, ready to go his own way. And then after the third night of inner struggle, the forces stopped tugging. They had given up. They had felt that he was strong enough to go his own way and that they could do no more. But they still wouldn't leave him. Perhaps there was still another chance. Exhausted, the boy slumped down onto the bridge. He felt how the battle with light and shadow had weakened him. But after a short nap, he would awake and be stronger than ever. He had decided about his life. 
Then he felt the warm breath of the wolves close to his face. He spread out the red coat he had always kept safe through the years and offered the wolves a place to camp. The wolves laid down at his feet. Zittern, Gedanken wie Gewitter Die letzten Jahre waren zu bitter Ballen die Finger zu einer Faust Du sprichst auf goldenen Zimmern Aber wir laufen auf Splittern Denn jedes Wort von dir mich triggert Warum hältst du nicht das Maul? Ja, dann hältst du deine Bluthunde Sie sind schon lange nicht mehr frei Und wenn sie rum, weil sie nur Zucker, Brot und Peitsche Kennen mein Wolf hat noch eine Breit Im Grinsen seinem Tod entgegen Denn niemand soll es sein Dass deine Nachwelt mich ein Feigling nennt Ich sterbe hier im Schnee Er färbt sich rot, bevor ich gehe Und heul zum Mond noch ein Gebet mit meinem allerletzten Schrei Ich fress die Kugeln für sie alle Also schießt so schnell ihr könnt Nimm lieber einen von euch mit als eure Kette um den Hals Ich sterbe lieber früh für euch Als zu alt und für mich selbst Sehe lieber früh mein eigenes Blut als altes Graus Fell, der Tod, der grinst mich an Ich seh sein Lauf, die Kugel blitzt Ich seh mein Leben geht vorbei Also grinse ich zurück, zurück. 